Um, so today we are going to be talking about using hypothesis with small groups. Um, and we'll get started. So if everyone could just start with intros in the chat. So if you could open up the chat and um, just introduce yourself, your name, where you're from, and what your experience is using Hypothesis, that would be super helpful to me. Um, my name is Christy. I'm with the Hypothesis Customer Success Team. I work with schools in the Eastern region. So I'm located uh, in Southern New Jersey in the, suburb, the suburbs of Philly. Um, so it is afternoon for me right now. Um, and I've been using Hypothesis in my own teaching. I, I teach adjunct courses for uh, Rutgers. So I've been using Hypothesis since 2019. All right, we just had one other person join. So just so you know, um, I'm promoting everybody to panelists and you do not have to turn on your camera or microphone, just giving the ability to unmute. So please accept that if you'd like the ability to unmute yourself. Cool. So we have some people who've just started using Hypothesis. We've got some representation from the central part of the country and the West. So good morning to everybody who is on the West Coast. I just finished lunch. <laughs> awesome. Welcome. Welcome. Okay, so some people don't have experience yet, so I will give a kind of brief demo of what it looks like. Um, and our focus today will be primarily talking about hypothesis in small groups. Um, as I mentioned, um, I'm going to change my name in Zoom just so you remember who I am. My name is Christy. I'm with the customer success team here at Hypothesis. Um, and as we move through the workshop today, uh, just please note we're a small group. So if you do want to ask a question, feel free to just pop in the text chat or unmute yourself. Um, so those of you who have used Hypothesis in your courses, um, could you please uh, let me know how you have done that in the poll, um, if you have used it in your courses. So you should have gotten a poll question to answer if you have, I think some, maybe people have not used it quite yet. enough. Open discussion so far. Cool. So I think in the poll, share we have some people who are using it for instructor guided reading right now, and some who are using it for open discussion. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that today. How you can do that with groups. And then the other idea I want to get, if you even if you haven't used hypothesis, so whether you have or have not, um, what do you struggle with the most when it comes to students doing the reading in your courses? Um, I believe this one you might be able to, to select more than one, maybe not. Um, so what do you struggle with most when it comes to the students reading in your courses? So we can make sure to talk about how a hypothesis might help um, solve that issue for you. You have most people who participated. So it looks like the majority of us have trouble figuring out what the students did or did not understand in the reading, but we also want to be able to get the students actively discussing the reading and also get students to make connections to other courses and other texts in their own course. Um, and we can talk about how you might do that with hypothesis. Um, Awesome. So thank you for participating in my polls. I will probably throw at least one more out at you today. Um, I will start out by talking about uh, what hypothesis is, since not everybody has used it before, and just give you a quick look at what it looks like in, in, in one LMS. I know people might be using different learning management systems here, depending on where you're from. So hypothesis um, basically allows you to take a reading in your learning management system, whether that's a PDF or it is a website, 
and it puts kind of a sidebar over it. It puts an overlay, a sidebar over that reading, and the students can have a discussion in that space that's right over your reading. So it's almost like they're having a threaded discussion board on top of the reading. Um, and hypothesis, we like to say, makes reading active, visible, and social. So it makes reading active in that students are more engaged with the text. So uh, some people in the poll had mentioned that they can't get students to actively engage in the class discussion. Um, and this can kind of help with that problem in that it's student, a lot of times students are reading passively. Hypothesis is asking them to actively engage with the text and experience some like metacognition as they're thinking about what they do understand, what they have questions about, what they're connecting with, um, et cetera. It makes reading more visible. So some of you mentioned that you want to have a better understanding of what students do or do not get about the reading. And hypothesis can help with that because it allows students to ask questions as they're reading and you can see those questions. So you can see that process that a student is going through as they're reading a document and they have questions about things or they are making connections to other courses or other materials in your course. And finally, hypothesis makes reading social in that all these annotations are collaborative space. So all of the students' annotations are showing up in one spot in the learning management system over the reading. So the whole class can talk about the reading together. Um, additionally, you can have students maybe talking in small groups, depending on your learning management system or how you have this assignment set up. So students can have a conversation with each other. Um, reading isn't so isolated with a hypothesis in your courses. So they might feel that they belong more in the class because they see like other students are having trouble with something or other students might have a, a similar question to them. Um, there are, I'm going to put in the chat a link to our slides today. Um, and so we have some resources that you can explore if you access the slide deck. Um, all these are live links that you can check out uh, outside of the workshop and share with your students. So Hypothesis is integrated into your learning management system. And I'll show you what that looks like in just a moment. Basically what that means is that your students don't have to create accounts or do anything special to use Hypothesis in your class. So once you add a Hypothesis enabled reading to your class, then students can log in to Hypothesis or log into your LMS and they access the reading and they're already logged into Hypothesis. So they don't have to create an account. Um, it is automatically creating like a collaborative space for your class, for your students. Um, and oops, sorry, I thought there was another slide there about grading. Uh, it will also allow you to grade annotations. So there is a um, option to connect these annotations to the gradebook in your LMS. You don't necessarily have to. Some Not everybody grades the annotations, but it is a possibility and you don't have to do anything extra to set that up. Um, so I'm going to just briefly show you what Hypothesis looks like in Canvas as an example. It looks really similar in all learning management systems. Um, so it's not really going to be super different if you're not using Canvas. Uh, just so the people who have not used Hypothesis before I get a sense of what it looks like. So I'm going to open up an assignment in Canvas. And basically, all learning management systems, your Hypothesis-enabled reading might load into a new window. And we have a couple things going on here. So we have our reading on the left, the text that I've loaded into the learning management system. And then this is the sidebar I was talking about on the right-hand side. So we have this hypothesis sidebar that is available with the reading. And all of the annotations will kind of be added along the sidebar here as the students read. So we only have one annotation so far. But if I wanted to add an annotation, I could find some text that I wanted to annotate. I could select that text. Oops, I'm not being very good at selecting the text. Sometimes you have to be a little careful about it. And then once I've selected the text, I can click annotate. And I have a spot that comes up on the right-hand side that I can type my annotation in. So I'm not going to say anything that's super deep right now, but 
I can post my annotation and it is added to the text. So you'll notice a couple things here. I have this annotation and it's connected to this piece of text, this phrase that I've selected. Um, and you can see that quoted in the text. So the student's discussion is right over that text. Like I said, it's referencing the text directly. They can write it right as they're reading. The another option is that you can see there is a arrow at the bottom of each annotation. That is a possibility for me as a student to reply to a classmate's annotation. So I can click on the arrow and then I can make an annotation that would be more additive than this one because that's not really adding anything to the conversation, but you'll see it creates a threaded discussion much like you would see in a traditional discussion board in your LMS. The big difference here being that we're right on the reading, I'm doing this as I'm reading. It's not a separate process to create my answer to the discussion question. So that's kind of just the basic of what the annotation uh, setup looks like with Hypothesis in the LMS. Um, going back to our LMS integration, can you all share with me um, what LMS are you using in the poll? Just because we do have some, our features are slightly different depending on the LMS. So we'll see what everyone's using. So awesome. Okay, we have, considering there's only five people here, we have a pretty good uh, spread. We have two people or three people rather in D2L, and then we have a Canvas and a Blackboard user. So um, we'll talk about how we can do some group assignments on all of those learning management systems. That's a great question. So in the chat, um, Preston asked, how are users separated? Would next semester's class see the previous semester's comments? So the answer to that is no, Get, assuming that you've created a new course site for your current semester. So when you copy a course site from one semester to the next, the annotations are not carried from one semester to the next semester. So each course site has their own private group for annotation. Does anyone else have any questions about um, some of the basic hypothesis uses before we start talking about using small groups in a hypothesis? That was a good question. Again, text chat or unmute, either one is fine. I'm guessing you'll get to this later, but you said it's graded. It, can that be graded and have it go directly to the grades function in D2L? Correct, yep. So when you're setting up the assignment in D2L, um, you would, uh, once you create the, uh, the graded assignment option, um, it would send it right to the grade book. Um, and basically what it would do is in D2L, it looks different in Canvas, um, but in D2L, what it does is it adds a bar to the top of the reading. You'll see a bar up here that has a drop down menu of the students' names and a spot to input their grade. So, and it'll filter. When you select a student's name, it'll show you only that student's um, annotations. Great, thanks. And we have, um, some resources here. So based on your LMS, on how to implement hypothesis in your LMS. Um, so how to set up a hypothesis enabled reading and how to um, grade in hypothesis. Uh, so I would definitely check those out in the slide deck. Um, so in this workshop, we're gonna be talking mostly about um, how to use hypothesis in your whole class versus how to use it in small groups, which can differ depending on the LMS. And then at the very end, I can go into grading a little bit more because um, I this shouldn't take too long to get through. So the default, when you set up a hypothesis enabled reading in your learning management system, the default is that everyone in one class can see each other's annotations. So the entire class is annotating together. 
Um, this can be a really different experience depending on the size of your class, right? So if you have um, 20 students in a class, that's going to look different than if you have 10 students in a class versus if you have 50 or 100 students in a class. Um, it can be beneficial for some things because students will see uh, and learn from a wide variety of perspectives. So you have more perspectives with the more people that are adding annotations to a document. Um, they can create community with their entire class. Uh, and then the instructor can answer questions in the annotations and the whole class can see those responses. So that's a benefit as well. If one student has a question that is very common amongst the rest of the class, uh, that can um, be addressed in a, in a venue that everyone will see the, the answer. So that can that's good. Uh, the annotations themselves though can get a little bit crowded if your class is really big or if your document is on the shorter end. So this one is three pages. It's not like long, but it's not super, super short. I've seen people having students annotate something that's just like a paragraph or just a page. And if you have 20 students all annotating on one page, we can get a lot of highlights going on. Um, so those are situations where you might wanna consider uh, breaking students into small groups. So small group annotations can be beneficial in hypothesis. Um, because you can give students more direct specific tasks to complete in the annotation. So you can kind of direct the students to annotate in a specific way. You might get a more diverse annotation set that way. Students might feel more comfortable annotating in a smaller group than in a venue where they'll, the whole class will see their annotations. So depending on their comfort level with the topic. And then a small group and another option that they could use is if you want the the annotations of the small group to be shared out with the whole class, um, a small group can kind of aggregate their annotations and present them to the rest of the class. So that's how you could kind of bring these annotations from the the reading to a you know a face to face class environment. It's have kind of a annotation report of sorts. So depending on your learning management system. Uh, and depending on what your goals are, there's a couple different ways to set up your hypothesis enabled reading and use them with small groups. Um, so we'll talk about each of these different ways. Um, for the people who are using D2L that are here today, um, these first two methods are going to be your primary uh, strategies, assigning tasks, different tasks to groups and creating digital fingerprints. And then Another option that we have for Canvas and Blackboard users is that we do have integrations with Canvas groups and Blackboard groups. Um, we are working on an integration with D2L groups, but uh, we don't currently have that running. So we have some other alternatives to creating groups or using groups with D2L. So one option if you are, and this is really if you're using um, D2L, or if you're using Canvas or Blackboard and you want, uh, you don't feel like setting up the groups in Canvas or Blackboard, you can break students into small groups with different annotation tasks. Um, so you can give all, everyone in group one can be given a specific task to do. Um, everyone in group two can be given another task to do, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So let me just, I'm going to grab as long as I can find it in my sea of tabs. Uh, an example of an assignment, yeah, I have it. I luckily selected the correct tab right away, which is not what I usually do. Um, so I will put a, a link to a document um, and this is an example, and I do see the question in the chat, I'm gonna get to in a second. This is an example of, um, an annotation assignment with group roles. So you could have uh, assigned students, you know, everyone in group one is going to be a discussion leader. Everyone in group two is going to be a passage master. Everyone in group three is going to be a creative connector. So that will give each of the students in a group a different role and can diversify how they're going to annotate a document and can help with that, like maybe overloading of a specific type of annotation or a specific area of the document um, to be annotated. So this is designed for you to just like copy and paste instructions into your course if you wanted to try this out. 
Um, I see the question one, once people are split into small groups, is a way for one small group to view another small group's comments? So if you were to use the Canvas or Blackboard small groups feature, um, the students cannot see the annotations in the other groups. They can only see the annotations in their group. If you were to do an activity like this, where you're kind of assigning different groups of students a different task, you would still be annotating as a whole class. You would just be giving smaller groups different uh, assignments to complete within that annotation uh, reading, if that makes sense. Um, so this is another another idea for different tasks that you could use if all the students are annotating one document, but you want to give different groups different tasks. Um, in addition to having students have different roles, you could assign groups to annotate um, different themes in the reading uh, or different pages. So one group could do pages one and two, one group could do pages two and three, etc. Uh, you could assign groups to answer specific questions related to the reading. Um, so when I teach, I have for each module in my course, I have like essential questions that the student should be able to answer by the end of the module that the readings are going to be covering. So sometimes I'll assign students like you answer essential question one, another group can answer essential question two. So they can, again, that will diversify what they're annotating. And then another um, possibility of this third one here is that one group could annotate uh, while another group is not responsible for annotating that week. They could observe, it's called like a fishbowl um, activity strategy. And that observing group can just write a reflection or something about the annotations or maybe report back in their class um, and talk about what they observed. Are there common themes? Were there common misunderstandings? And then, then you could have that annotating versus fishbowl role kind of go back and forth between two groups um, so that the groups are responsible for different things, different weeks. Um, so Brendan, I noticed you just joined. Um, I'm promoting everybody to panelists just so that they can unmute if they like to, but no one has to turn on their camera or has to um, unmute if they don't want to. Just a warning. <laughs> okay, so there's with D2L, there is a way. I'm going to like hide this for a second because I don't want everyone to start reading it. Yet. There is a way to um, create small group, like have students actually annotate a document in smaller groups. It's just a little more technically complicated than in Canvas or Blackboard uh, currently because we do not have a small groups integration. So if you're using Canvas or Blackboard, this specifically does not apply to you because you can use the small groups feature with Canvas or Blackboard. If you're using D2L or Moodle, just because I'm not sure, Brendan, which LMS you're using, everyone else took a poll earlier. Um, <laughs> if you're using D2L, okay, so never mind. If you're using D2L, um, there is a way that you can uh, use small groups. Uh, and it just requires a little bit of background explanation. So the way Hypothesis recognizes um, where to put annotations in a document is it recognizes a document and a course. And when it sees those two things, it says, okay, I'm gonna show all of these annotations for this document and this course. So if in D2L, if you try to post a single document twice in two separate assignments and restrict those assignments to two separate groups, Hypothesis will say, oh, same document, same course, here are all the annotations. And it will show all of the annotations for both of those groups, even though the assignment is restricted by students. The way that you can get around that is something called digital fingerprinting. So in this method, you would go to a website that we have um, and run your PDF through something we have called a digital fingerprinter. So if you want a student, there are two groups of students, for example, to annotate the same document, you just have to get two different copies of that document with different fingerprints because PDFs have this metadata in the background that makes hypothesis see multiple copies of it as the same thing. So you would go to this website, you would say, I want 
um, let's say I want two copies of this one PDF and it will get you two copies of the one PDF. And then you would create separate hypothesis enabled readings for each group in your class and then restrict those groups if you'd like to in D2L. So only group one can access group one's assignment and group two can access group two's assignment. So that is a little bit of like a more technically complicated way to do it in D2L. Um, the success team at Hypothesis is always happy to help you if you do want to use a smaller group, like only part of your class annotating a document at one time. Um, then we can help you set that up because the first after you do it like one time it's a little bit easier to understand um so but we do have the instructions in here if you'd like to review them if you are using canvas or blackboard the process is a, a little bit simpler because we currently have the integration with canvas and blackboard small groups so the important thing with both canvas and blackboard is that you you configure your group sets first before you set up the hypothesis enabled reading in Canvas or in Blackboard. So you'll want to set up your group sets before you get started. And then after they're set up, then you'll be, be able to tell hypothesis, this is a group assignment. These are the group sets you should use. And it will break those students into small groups. And the small groups will be able to annotate the document and only see the annotations within their group. Once you have enabled the group feature in Canvas or Blackboard, then what you would see at the top of this um, hypothesis sidebar is instead of seeing the name of your class, which is what is normally displayed there, you would see a drop down that would let you toggle between each group. So you would be able to switch between looking at one group's annotations and another. The students themselves don't have the option to switch between groups, so it's only on the instructor end. And Blackboard, same thing. You want to configure your group sets first, and then you can create your assignment with um, using those group sets. And you'll get the same um, pop up asking you, do you want to make this a group assignment? And you can select that you do. So I went through a lot of stuff with groups today and not I know not everybody is familiar with all of the features of Hypothesis, even as a whole class assignment. Um, so I just want to review what are some of the um, resources we have if you want more help. We do have as a, a partner with Hypothesis, you have access to our support team. So our support emails here, um, if you need any assistance with anything, you can email them and they'll be happy to help. They're super responsive. You can also get pedagogical support from your customer success manager. So I have colleagues that work with schools, you know, across the U.S. and internationally as well, um, and they will be happy to help you get a hypothesis enabled reading set up in your course or brainstorm how you might want to use it in your course um, or anything like that. So you can use the link that's here to find um, an appointment. And then you can also email success at hypothesis.is. Um, and if you have any questions and we are happy to um, direct you to the correct customer success manager. Um, so again, if you have, if you need assistance getting set up for the first time, or if you have just specific questions, they can help you with that. Um, does anyone have any questions about hypothesis or using hypothesis with small groups at this time? If you could put them in the chat, or if you um, wanna unmute, either of those is fine. Okay, um, so it looks like others might not have questions. I'm going to hang back for a couple minutes. I had promised to show what grading would look like in D2L. So I'm going to just show that really quick if you want to check that out. Or if you have any other questions that are not super related to like small groups with hypothesis, you can stay on the call as well. 
but that was everything we were going to go through with small groups. Uh, I will be emailing out the slides and the uh, link to the recording. So if you'd like to access anything after the session, um, you can always review this again. And I'm going to post the link to the slides again in the chat um, so that you can access all of the resources in the slide deck uh, when whenever you need to. Um, so let me just pull up D2L so I can show what the grading looks like there. All right, so once I'm in D2L um, in my course, uh, I can go to my different um, units on the right there. And then once I open a reading, um, as I mentioned before, you can see there is a reading bar along the top here. So I can um, select if I had students with annotations, um, thanks Preston, thanks for joining. Um, then I could select a student there and it would uh, filter the annotations by student. It would only show that student's annotations and I could enter the grade here. So that's basically what the grading looks like in D2L in Canva, or actually that's what the grading looks like in D2L, Blackboard and Moodle. Um, in Canvas, it does work with SpeedGrader. So anybody who's using Canvas, you would be able to open SpeedGrader with your hypothesis enabled reading and filter the annotations through there. Um, any other questions that I can answer today? <laughs> 